On the first couple of weeks of the new year, I had the great privilege of embedding with the Army's 212 Infantry, young Americans out of Fort Carson, Colorado, spending the longest year of their lives in the mountains of Afghanistan along the Pakistan border. It's a place known as the Valley of Death. And as you'll see, their days are filled with humor and horror, boredom and fear, courage and frustration. And while we debate policy back here, every man there has two goals, do the job and get home alive. Flying into the Hindu Kush mountains in January, you'd expect snow and mayhem. But at first, there's only dust and quiet. Birds chirp, the sun warms, and soldiers start their day. The Afghans make breakfast and do laundry. All seems as tranquil as the nativity scene still up at the outpost chapel. It doesn't last. First lesson? How to tell the difference between incoming and outgoing fire. It's mostly outgoing, and it is constant, so you get used to it. On a forward operating base, or FOB, the food is decent. There's satellite TV and internet, which can both soothe and intensify homesickness. But outside the wire, comfort disappears. Out here, there is only danger and sweat on terrain that cauterizes lungs and legs. Every day, under 60 pounds of armor and ammo, they climb these hills looking for fighters and hiding spots, or building hiding spots of their own. A soldier will spend a week at an observation post like this, where the weight room has a spectacular view, <laughs> but the bedroom suite is a bit rustic. We're joking, like, we're gonna take a camping trip when we get back, and everybody's like, nah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> you feel vulnerable down in these uh, fobs? It is in the low ground, but with the observation post uh, and, and their line of sight and how far they can see out, we pre feel pretty comfortable here. Yeah. A few hours later, a Katushin rocket comes from the hillside right over his shoulder. That's what landed. It hit that uh, A&A Humvee over there. Actually, it's still hot. It crushes an ambulance and sends shrapnel into the limbs of three Afghans. They use a metal detector to cut it out. Chances are the Taliban paid a local villager a few dollars to launch that rocket. About 90% of the fighters up here aren't driven by jihad, but the need for a job. So the mission now is to win them all over. Young? Bill. 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 Yes. Bill. Exactly. And old. Salam. By shaking hands and sipping chai tea and holding endless meetings with last week's enemies, but winning hearts and minds means taking greater risks. Given the constant sniper activity in this valley, walking across an open field like this is something these soldiers would never do. But the village elders said that if they walk us out, we'll be safe. As we reach the other side, Taliban radio chatter confirms that we were in enemy sights the entire time. As soon as we got up to the trucks, he said, OK, shoot, shoot, shoot. Why do they call you Huggy Bear? Actually, uh, I am funny, like, and a skinny like Huggy Bears. With their lovable translator in tow, a group of MPs heads out to train Afghan police, who aren't interested in training today. But after tea and a few Pakistani music videos, they agree to a lesson on how to clean and hold a gun. Two feet, where they bend the knees. It's a telling glimpse. Das. Das. Both the army and police are filled with underskilled, underpaid men who grew up in a corrupt system. They want to become officer. Just they keep money. So, so somebody can become an officer by bribing. Yeah, by bribing. Yeah. For some, the day ends with blessed downtime. Oh. Best part of armor, taking it off. Huh? Exactly, taking it off. For others, it won't end until after a moonlight raid into a hostile village. I'm still alive, Stigret. It's the what? I'm still alive, Stigret. <laughs> I won't fully understand what he means until a couple days later. All right, you ready to do this? I'm ready.